It is easier to do the right thing when we know what the right thing to do is. We can't rely on instinct to find the way, we need guidance. But once we're shown the path and begin to climb it, we find that with each step up, we grow in wisdom and fortitude. Looking down, we see many of our old desires have fallen dead on the wayside. They look so feeble lying there that we wonder why we ever thought we lacked the courage to resist them. The mountain of wisdom is different from other mountains. The higher we climb, the stronger we grow. People are always looking for the easy way, the hard way, the way learned by difficult experience and painful realizations doesn't interest them. They want a shortcut. True Dharma seekers are afraid of shortcuts. They know better. They know that without effort, there's no sense of accomplishment. It's that sense that keeps them going. People who don't appreciate the struggles of climbing lack understanding of where they've been, awareness of who they are, and determination to continue climbing. That's why they never attain the Dharma. What are the two most common goals for people who live in the world? Wealth and fame. To gain these goals, people are willing to lose everything, including the health of their body, mind and spirit. Not a very good exchange, is it? Worldly wealth and fame fade so quickly that we wonder which will last longer, the money, the fame or the man. But consider the goal of enlightenment, of attaining the wealth of the Dharma. Those who reach this goal are vigorous in body, keen in mind and serene in spirit, right into eternity. There are people who, though having accomplished nothing, connive to receive great honours or high positions of authority. Well, people who gain high rank without having earned it are like rootless trees. They live in fear that even the slightest wind will topple them. Undeserved honour is a preface to disgrace. The rich are admired because they've saved money, but what's been saved can be spent. The admiration goes with the money. A king receives loyalty because his people regard him as noble. If they decide he's acting badly, he may lose more than his throne. Those who are rich in the Dharma and noble in the Buddha's way always retain their wealth and the fealty of the people. By successfully concealing his crimes, a person can't consider himself honourable. He knows he's done wrong. By constantly bragging, a person can't claim to be famous even though he does hear his name mentioned everywhere he goes. By affecting the manners of holy men, monks may receive veneration, but a pious demeanour never made anyone a saint. What are true honour, true recognition and true piety? They are internal qualities, not superficial acts or appearances. When a man's conscience is free from stain, he is honourable. When his reputation for integrity precedes him, he is famous. When humility and reverence for the Dharma flow naturally out of his character, he is esteemed. If men can't evade the demands of their father and emperor, what can they do when death gives them an order? They protest bitterly and scream at heaven, but they've got to obey. The man who howls the loudest is the one who thinks he's just reached the pinnacle of worldly success. The enlightened understand life and death. They always live well and never complain. People think that if they possess worldly knowledge, they know everything, but that's not correct. Even when subjects are mastered, there's always room for error, and if the finest archers can miss their targets occasionally, what about the mediocre ones? When we know the Dharma, we have all the information we need. No matter what other facts we acquire additionally, our storehouse of knowledge though very deep and wide, is already full. Everything in the universe is subject to change. There's only one exception. Death always follows life. Isn't it strange that people haven't noticed this? That they conduct their lives as though they're going to live forever. That death is nothing to worry about. Of course, if they really want to live as long as they obviously expect, they'd better pursue the Dharma.
life, death, and change itself are transcended in the Dharma. I glean what the harvesters have overlooked or rejected. So why are their baskets empty while mine is bursting with so much good food? They just didn't recognize their Buddha nature when they saw it. Everything in life depends on the choices we make. In polite society, everybody notices if a man's hands are dirty, he will be stared at contemptuously, why the fellow will be wretched until he can wash his hands. But isn't it funny how a man can have character that's defiled by greed and hate, and nobody will pay the slightest attention? He'll move about in perfect ease. Evidently, a dirty character isn't as worthy of notice as a dirty hand. It's so simple to restore our dirty hands to a state of purity. We just wash them. But what about corrupted character? That's quite another problem. If a man carries too many worldly burdens, his body will soon wear out. If he worries about too many worldly problems, his mind will soon collapse. To be so occupied with material things is a dangerous way to live, a foolish waste of energy. A man ought to simplify his needs and use his strength to attain spiritual goals. Nobody ever ruined his mind or body by exercising self-restraint. What, ultimately, is the difference between hardship and pleasure? A hardship is an obstacle, and an obstacle is a challenge, and a challenge is a way to use one's dharma strength. And what is more pleasurable than that? People are always so afraid of hardship. They go through life trying to avoid the difficult and embrace the easy. For me, it's just the opposite. I don't discriminate at all between hardship and pleasure. Whether the path ahead of me is difficult or easy, I don't have to hesitate to follow it. People indignantly condemn thieves to steal material goods. I worry about the kind of thief who steals souls. People act to protect their property. They build walls and install security systems. They hang every thief they catch. What measures do they take to protect their minds from corruption and loss? A man with good character is gentle, humble and free of material desires. A man with bad character is harsh, proud and enslaved by greed. Gentleness indicates greater strength than harshness. Humility is more admirable than insolence. Freedom is always preferred to slavery. It's obvious a man with good character has a better life. There are material gains and spiritual gains. To gain the material objects of its desire, the mind searches the external world. When it seeks spiritual gains, it turns its attention to the heart. A person who ignores his heart becomes attached to the material world. The Dharma seeker looks inward and attends to his heart. That's where he wants to form attachments. You can't be comfortable if you've got splinters in your skin. Worse, if you don't get them out, the skin becomes infected. Infected skin becomes necrotic. It's the same with the heart. You can't be comfortable if splinters of greed are stuck in it. And if you don't get them out, your heart becomes infected. What will you do if your spirit dies? A natural disaster, a so-called act of God, doesn't discriminate between its victims. It damages everybody, rich and poor, good and bad. Whenever you have power over people, keep natural disasters in mind. Be godlike in your fairness. The best way to convert other people to the Dharma way is to convert yourself to it first. Be an example for them to follow. One natural act flowing out of a good character is more convincing than the most eloquent speech. It's easier to go from poverty to luxury than it is to go from luxury to poverty. Everybody knows that. Poverty is like being tossed around in troubled water. If a person is alert, he can find a way out. But luxury is like drifting gently in a river current. He'll fall asleep and won't wake up until he's in the ocean. Welcome, hardship. Regard rain as so much morning dew. Be afraid of sunny days. It's hard to climb with the blazing sun on your back. Our Buddha nature is always clear and bright. If we can't see, it is because our eyes are darkly veiled with emotional dust. 
We can't clean dust with dust, and we can't calm emotions with emotions. So how do we remove that veil? We use Dharma wisdom. Enlightenment lifts the veil and illuminates our Buddha face.